On this episode of the Aesthetics Podcast, a lot of news. In fact, this show is all news, catching you up on everything that's happened since the last episode back in February. And there's quite a bit. We've got new anniversary logos, jersey retirement nights, outdoor game updates, reverse retro reports, uniform ads, and more. So stick around for this one. The podcast starts now. I'm Chris, and this is episode five of the Aesthetics Podcast. I am back after a short hiatus. It happens from time to time when I get busy with my real job. Sometimes my work here on Aesthetics has to take a bit of a back seat. But I'm always happy when I can jump back in, especially with an episode like this. So thank you for listening and for subscribing to the Aesthetics channel. Happy to have you along for the ride. Like I said, there is a ton of news to discuss, so there won't be a special guest or a central topic of discussion. Instead, it'll be one long, loose thread segment, basically, followed by a bit of concept commentary at the end. Now, if you heard the previous episode of the podcast, you may remember I was planning to have some AHL team marketing managers on the show to follow up on the AHL versus NHL design decoded video. I'll have to delay that a bit, but I will come back to it. Instead, I'm focusing on a lot of the little news stories that bubbled up over the past few months. Things that weren't quite big enough for their own flash report videos, but are still worth talking about. So, let's go. Well, we are now well into the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs as I record this, so let's start there. There's not usually much to discuss uniform-wise at this time of year, but you know I can always find something. For instance, the NHL has been allowing teams to use their third jersey for playoff home games in recent years. They still won't let them alternate between home and third jerseys. You have to pick one and stick with it throughout. This year, the Hurricanes and Oilers chose to use their alternate uniforms at home, so we're seeing the Black Storm jersey in Raleigh and the navy blue design in Edmonton, just like last year. For what it's worth, both of these teams have been part of the Jersey rumor mill lately, but we'll circle back to that in a minute. The other playoff-related topic I wanted to bring up has to do with the Stanley Cup playoffs branding itself. These new logos were revealed back in March, and since the start of the postseason, every player has a Stanley Cup decal on the back of his helmet. Now that's typical in the playoffs, but what's new with this redesign is that each team is using their own custom color version. I still haven't heard how the Stanley Cup final logo will be represented on the uniforms. I've speculated about the use of Chromaflex badging as opposed to embroidery, but we may have to wait until the Stanley Cup final to find out for sure. What else? Uh, Before we look ahead to next season, let's take a look back at a few items from 21-22. For one thing, there were some really interesting pregame warm-up jerseys used around the league but I am saving that discussion for another upcoming video, kind of a recap of all the the good stuff from the year. Now, let's talk outdoor jerseys. On March 13th, we finally got to see the Maple Leafs and Sabres in action for their game in Hamilton. The jerseys looked good, but I'm not really itching to see either of them come back on a regular basis. Good one-offs, nothing more. But the night before was interesting. On March 12th, the Nashville Predators, wearing their Stadium Series uniform, hosted the St. Louis Blues, who decided to wear their Winter Classic setup. It was a really odd combination, the futuristic style of the Stadium Series against the more traditional look of the Winter Classic. It was kind of fun to see that pairing. And like the Heritage Classic, it's probably not something we want to see over and over. But as a one-time event, I thought it was a neat touch. A number of players reached 1,000 career NHL games this season. Those events are usually marked by a special pregame ceremony, often involving a gift of a silver hockey stick. Sometimes the player's teammates will even wear his jersey number during warm-ups as a nice tribute. But rarely do we see a jersey patch dedicated to an active player worn during the game. On March 17th, Claude Giroux skated in his 1,000th NHL game, his last as a Philadelphia Flyer, it turned out. The team wore this patch on their chests to commemorate the event. And then two days later, he was traded to the Florida Panthers. While we're talking player milestones, we had a few late season jersey retirement ceremonies. Thought you might be interested in seeing some patch and banner designs. On February 24th, the Nashville Predators raised Pekka Rene's number 35 to the rafters. On March 5th, the Blue Jackets retired Rick Nash's number 61. And on March 13th, it was Miko Koivu's number nine in Minnesota. 
All three of those teams, by the way, were part of the NHL's last major expansion between 1998 and 2000. And for each team, it was the first jersey number retired for a player. I couch it that way because technically the Minnesota Wild retired number one in honor of their fans way back on opening night of their inaugural season. You know, the Kraken did the same thing with number 32 this year. Maybe it's a Todd Lewicki thing. He was part of the creation of both expansion teams. Elsewhere, an experiment. In early April, the Carolina Hurricanes tested out kind of a new look, really more of a mix and match. They wore their black gear from their alternate uniform with their white road jerseys. Typically, they have red pants and gloves. Two nights later, they did the same thing with their home jersey. Black pants, black gloves, and this time black helmets. It's a good look, and it kind of makes you wonder if it was a tryout for a future redesign. For what it's worth, the Columbus Blue Jackets also did this about a year ago. For their final road game of the season against the Hurricanes, oddly enough, they traded their standard red pants for navy blue. An interesting experiment, but it didn't lead to any permanent changes for the following season. For Carolina, on the other hand, rumors persist that team owner Tom Dundon is pushing for a change to the Canes' home uniform. I don't have any specific information to share, but it would not surprise me to see them launch something new next season. We'll keep an eye on that. Then there was a pretty solid report out of Edmonton back in March by way of the oil stream. Tom Gazzola having this to report. All right, well, I know the Oilers' jersey lineup for next season. And, Here we go. Uh, I, I teased it. I think in the off season about them going back to Royal blue confirmed the Oilers are going back to the Royal blues next season. Uh, just the standard classic look, both for the home and the away. They're going to have the reverse retro reboot of the Todd McFarlane Jersey and dusty. They will be keeping the Navy alternates as well. So four jerseys for Oof. the Oilers next year. And they're going back to the Royal blue. The pylon orange is out and the current, configuration with the darker blue brighter orange on the away jersey will be out next year classic royal blue coming back next year i know a lot of fans will be happy to see royal blue finally returning it seems like the oilers just keep gravitating back to their original colors makes you wonder why they keep going away from it at all just to bring it back a few years later that being said i like their orange jerseys it's a distinctive look that will always be synonymous with the Connor mcdavid era but ultimately we have to just admit the Oilers are not an orange team. They're a blue team. Still, Royal Blue is starting to get a bit overused in the NHL. It's like when you look back at the late 90s and early aughts, every Royal Blue team was switching to Navy. The Blues, the Islanders, Sabres, Canucks. And now we're seeing a title shift back to Royal here in the 20s. Not that I'm complaining. I certainly wouldn't advocate for a darker, dingy blue over a bright Royal Blue for any of these teams. It would just be nice to have some more variety in the league. By the way, in that Oilers report, Tom also mentioned the return of the reverse retro program for next season. Once again, every team will be involved. I don't have a lot of details yet, but there are a few reports floating around that are worth repeating. The Avalanche are apparently resurrecting the old Colorado Rockies with a reboot of their look from the 1970s. Avs Insider reports it'll be white. Unclear if they'll use their original Rockies colors or apply their burgundy and blue as we saw with the Nordiques reverse retro last time around. There are also reports the Montreal Canadiens will branch out beyond hockey for their reverse retro with a design inspired by the old Montreal Expos. I'm eager to see how accurate that one turns out to be. The NHL's newest team, the Seattle Kraken, will also be in the mix for a reverse retro. Of course, the year-old expansion team has no throwbacks of their own, but I'm told not to expect a Metropolitan's design, at least not yet. My guess is the team wants to wait until the product on the ice is a bit better before drawing any comparisons to America's first Stanley Cup champs. Instead, I'm intrigued by two possibilities, both revolving around a former Seattle hockey hero named Guile Fielder. He played only a handful of games in the NHL, but was a genuine star in the Western Hockey League and played 11 seasons for the Seattle Totems, where he won three league championships in the 1950s and 60s. Now, given the problematic nature of reviving that particular name and logo today, there is another option, a better option. Before becoming the Totems, the team was previously known as the Seattle Americans, and it was under that banner that Fielder first played in Seattle in 1955. So why am I getting caught up on Guile Fielder? Well, not only was he the Northwest's first hockey superstar, he's also been highlighted by the team for several years now. In fact, the first ever team award was named in his honor 
announced in 2019, long before the Seattle Kraken even had a name, and at 91 years old, he made the first presentation of the Guile Fielder Award for Team MVP to Yanni Gord in April. So if you're looking for a great story to go with your reverse retro jersey and given the Kraken organization's thoughtfulness when it comes to their brand, something based on the Seattle Americans just makes sense. As for the rest of the league's reverse retros, I don't have a lot of solid information to report right now, but I do have some wishes of my own that counts for anything. But I want to get to some other news here, so I'll save that for an upcoming video. For now, let's get back to what we know. More facts, fewer rumors. Let's talk anniversaries. A handful of teams will mark major milestones in their existence during the 22-23 season. And we already have a few logos to mark these occasions. In February, the Carolina Hurricanes revealed their 25th anniversary logo. It's a 25, set over a silver shield, with the negative space between the numbers forming the shape of North Carolina. Looks really cool, and it's much more obvious than the shape that hides between the storm flags on their third jersey. And speaking of storm flags, they bookend the banner that reads, Established 1997. In March, the New York Islanders debuted their 50th anniversary mark. It's not impressive. They're using this textured gold pattern, not unlike what we see the Vegas Golden Knights use all over their marketing and social media graphics. It has kind of an Art Deco vibe, I think, which feels out of place for the Islanders. But worse than that, it just looks dingy. I'm sure they'll find a way to make it work next season, but it's just not working for me quite yet. <laughs> Here's another odd one. Also in March, the Ottawa Senators introduced not a 30th anniversary logo per se, but rather merch designed in tribute to the Bring Back Our Senators campaign from the late 80s when Bruce Firestone led the charge to put an NHL team in Ottawa. The thing is, the team calls this a 30-year throwback. 30 years ago was 1992. By that point, they had a franchise, which was awarded back in December of 1990 and had long since settled on the Senators' name. And the campaign itself began at least a year before that. So it's really more of a 33-year throwback. But okay, maybe I'm nitpicking. But why design what's arguably a worse version of the old Peace Tower logo, why not just sell shirts with the original logo? I mean, if it's meant to be a throwback item anyway, so much about this makes no sense to me. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm always dumping on the Senator's branding the past couple years. It's not intentional. I just keep struggling to understand some of their decision making, you know, but we'll move on for now. Let's get into the big events for next season. In early March, the NHL announced the opponent for the 2023 stadium series at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. The Canes will host the Washington Capitals, who will make their fourth outdoor appearance and second in the stadium series. They last played Toronto in 2018. Then in April came the official Winter Classic announcement and confirmation of the rumor that the Bruins will host the Pittsburgh Penguins at Fenway Park. The Pens will tie Chicago for the most NHL outdoor appearances with their sixth, third in the Winter Classic. And the league confirmed the game will take place not on January 1st, but a day later on Monday, January 2nd. Typically, we'll see Winter Classic logos and team crests in late summer, with jersey reveals in November. For Stadium Series jerseys, don't expect to see anything official until December or January. The NHL also announced the teams that will head to Europe as part of the Global Series in the fall. The Predators and Sharks will meet in Prague to open the season in October. The Avalanche and Blue Jackets will face off in Finland in November. No specialty jerseys are expected for the Global Series games. And that nearly wraps up the NHL portion of the episode, but I guess we have to address the despair-inducing elephant in the room. We know jersey ads are making their debut next season. Disappointing, but inevitable, right? The Capitals were the first to announce their sponsor last September. The Caesars Sportsbook logo will be pasted onto their home and third jerseys at least. I don't think they've said anything official yet regarding their road uniforms. But in the last two months, four more teams have joined the advertising fray. The Columbus Blue Jackets will have Safe Light logos on their home, road, and alternate uniforms. The Pittsburgh Penguins partnered with Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield for their black jersey. And the St. Louis Blues helmet sponsor, Stiefel, will now have its logo on the team's jerseys. Not sure if they'll stay on the helmets, though. And most recently came the announcement that Circus Sports will advertise on the Vegas Golden Knights home jersey. But interestingly, they showed their gold jersey for this announcement, meaning it seems the rumored promotion of the gold alternate to primary will begin next fall. So get used to seeing a lot more gold in Vegas. 
I expect the dark gray jersey will continue to be used as a third for at least one more season. After that, I hear a new black third may be in the works. I suspect the Knights could become one of those teams that does a lot of jersey experimentation in the years to come. Because why not? It is Vegas. Anyway, it's really the end of an era with these sponsor ads coming to jerseys next fall. So for those of you who are dreading it, just relish in these Stanley Cup playoffs. Many teams have already played their last game with an untarnished jersey, but there are still a few games left to enjoy. I can't imagine I'll lose interest in jerseys after the ads appear, but I won't quite be able to hold them in the same esteem I do today. It'll just be a new era, right? The only constant is change. All right, one more NHL-related item before we shift to some minor league branding news. Adidas, the exclusive provider of authentic NHL jerseys, is being accused of selling NHL jerseys that are less than authentic. A lawsuit filed in Florida in April alleges the company advertises authentic jerseys that most people would describe more like replicas. I guess that's true, but I can't see what the real harm is to the plaintiff, or any fan for that matter. Game-issued jerseys do vary from the authentics that Adidas sells to fans in terms of material and fit, I would think primarily because the needs of players differ from the needs of fans. Players wear all sorts of padding and gear underneath their uniforms, and they take a real beating. Plus, they sweat like crazy. None of that is true for you or me when we're sitting in the stands repping our team. While technically this guy may have a point about how they're being advertised, I imagine all that will come of this is that Adidas will adjust how they describe the jerseys in their marketing. I've definitely heard people go on about wanting to buy a made-in-Canada version, exactly like what the players wear in a game, but I imagine most would change their tune once they see that price point. Anyway, I can only speak for myself, but I've been happy with these so-called authentic Adidas jerseys that I've purchased, all made in Indonesia, good fit, good quality, comfortable, and they look just like what you see on the ice. I'll keep an eye on this story and see if anything develops. Meantime, a noteworthy date to watch is 2024. Adidas signed a seven-year deal with the NHL that began in 2017. I expect it to be renewed, but it's something to keep an eye on over the next two years. All right, let's wrap things up in the American Hockey League. The San Jose Barracuda, affiliate of the San Jose Sharks, unveiled this new third jersey on April 28th. The blackout motif mirrors the Sharks alternate, but without any of the cooler design elements. Minimal teal striping, Reebok Edge style shoulder piping, and instead of a great logo, it features a silly nickname on the front. Not really my cup of tea. I wish I had something nice to say about it, but instead, I'll find something nice to say in the next segment. Concept commentary, up next. Well, this has been a long episode on a lot of different subjects and a lot of me blabbering on, so I'm happy to come in for a landing on some concept art. The Aesthetics Concept Showcase continues to be updated with daily artwork from readers who do some really outstanding work. With another round of Reverse Retro on everyone's mind, it should be no surprise that I'm seeing a ton of concepts in that vein. One standout is this Seattle Kraken design from Justin Wiltron, published on April 26th. I mentioned earlier that we shouldn't expect the Seattle Metropolitan's look anytime soon for them, but when the time does come, this would be a good one. It uses all four shades of Kraken Blue to recreate the top-to-bottom striping pattern of the original, and the monochromatic effect really evokes the old black-and-white photos of Metropolitan's players. If you saw this jersey on the ice today, you definitely get the sense that it comes from another time. It's very cool. The next one is for all the Vexillology fans out there. That's the study of flag design. Andrew Yablonski created the Canadian City Series, published on February 22nd. In it, he imagines flag-based specialty jerseys for all seven Canadian NHL teams. He emailed me, saying, I have always been intrigued by unconventional design in sports jerseys. Hockey is a sport where tradition is admired and strongly upheld, and where new design ideas aren't always appreciated. How right he is. But in designing jerseys based on local flags, he really hit on something cool. And readers were loving it. I rarely see a concept post with so many positive reader comments. As Andrew points out, some of the flags lent themselves well to team jerseys, Calgary and Montreal, for example, while others needed a bit of reining in, like Ottawa and Vancouver. Anyway, I tried to show all seven designs here, but they go by fast, so I really recommend heading over to the Concept Showcase to check them out at your own pace. 
All right, I always like to close out on an unpublished concept to ensure you're getting something new in this segment. Today, I wanted to share a few designs from Greg Fouch. I've shared a couple of his concepts on the site in recent months. He focuses rather exclusively on the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's got some great sets, but maybe too many to ever be published on the site and very much worth a look, like this trio without a black jersey, gray, white, and gold. And here's another set that uses powder blue and navy blue from the early years. And finally, this set takes inspiration from the old Pittsburgh Pirates who played in the NHL in the 1920s. I'd really love to see some of those century-old jersey designs make a reappearance. Anyway, that does it for this episode of the Aesthetics Podcast. Let me know what you think of all the, the news and concepts in the comments below. And thank you, as always, for subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up goes a long way. That's all for now. See you next time.